Okay, I'm Kyla. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say about the experience of like the s piece that's past all understanding. Um, I uh, last Friday, um, my ex best friend called me, and uh, I had a discussion with her, and she said I can no longer see my godson ever. And uh, I, <laughs> I like raised that little boy, um, and he's he's four now. Um, and, like, I remember I was in the back, and I was just crying, and I was like, God, like, it hurts so much to lose him. And he's like, I, it happens to me every day. And, um, and he's like, I know what it's like <laughs> to let your child go. Um, yeah, and uh, he just, like, put this peace over me, you know, and uh, the love that I have for that little boy, God loves him so much more. And, um, and he... Uh, you know, like, it's, I didn't protect him like I should have in the ways, and but I know that God always has and God always will. Um, he actually confessed Christ when he was four, and that was uh, the biggest honor of my life is leading him to the Lord. But um, I know God's hand is on him, and God just really comforted me. So. so I was born with epilepsy and was always told that I would never, ever drive. And God healed me of epilepsy, and today I got my L. <laughs> and to top it off, um, I've always had really bad vision, um, but I hated my glasses, so when I was younger, I just threw them into the lake and never <laughs> wore glasses again. So really, my vision should be horrible by now for all the compensating. So when they went to go do the eye exam, I was like, oh, crap, I'm going to fail this. And I passed. And she's like, oh, your left eye's just a little bit weaker, so just do your shoulder checks. But, yeah, so he oh. healed my eyes without me even asking. God is good. Um, okay, well, basically, me and my mom, like, we really want to go to Haiti. Um, and so she's been saving lots of money. And then my dad told me that someone just came through the door, and they, like, dropped off $800. And then, so that was from God, so we're going to go to Haiti soon. Come on. Um, I feel like I need to puke. Um, <laughs> don't really know where to start, because a lot is, I'm Stephanie. This Hi. Um, this is my second week here. I came on... Yeah, last Tuesday, the first time. And, um, um, well, uh, it's going to be a while, but I'll try to make it fast. Um, so I was raised, I, I got back, I mean, um, wow, I'm so nervous right now. Um, uh, dedicated at Aboriginal Pentecostal Assembly when I was just fresh. And so I've been going there ever since, raised in a Christian home. Um, but everybody has their own different way of living, and I definitely kind of dabbled a little bit. And so I just got married two months ago to an amazing man, and he's a Christian as well. No, he can't come. To, he's a dairy farmer. He's quite busy. Um, okay, so I, when I came here on Tuesday, I knew that God wanted to be here but I didn't really know why, and Andy, Andy Clawwitter and Brandon Story have been inviting me for a while, and I finally came, came to church. My mom's been going here, so I, I just figured I'd come here, and I wanted to leave, and I just felt really uncomfortable, and so I just, I went home afterwards, and I just felt like I should come back again on Friday last week. So I come in, and I feel way worse, and I see people like rocking back and forth, and everyone's filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, wow, these people are weird. But that's, like, no, like, I've done that. Like, years ago, when I was, like, me and God were just fantastic. Like, you filled me with the Holy Spirit. I had a vision, and just stuff happened in my life, and I just got sidetracked. So I came back, and I was freaked right out, but I knew that God wanted me here. So the whole time, my body was just in so much pain, and I knew that something was going I wanted to go home so bad, and... Then there was an altar call at the end of the night, and Pastor Mike, it is Mike, right? Okay, Pastor Mike um, 
He said, I feel there's somebody here who wants to leave. You've wanted to leave all night, but the Holy Spirit's kept you here. My body felt like I was going to blow up. I was so hot. I was stressed and right out. My mom's like, are you okay, Steffi? Steffi, what's going on? I was like, stop it, mother. I just want to go out. So five minutes later, I'm just, I feel like I'm like, just, I got to go up there, but I really don't want to. But I did, and I talked to Mike, because that was me. Wow, what's your story? So I told him, like, like, there's been something going on with me that I just can't figure out. Like, I try to get closer with God, but I just can't. And it's difficult reconnecting with the Lord. And I, there's so many things, like, I, I smoked for, like, two and a half years, tried to quit, could not quit, read the Bible, couldn't get anything, like, the devil just completely blanked. I couldn't, I'd read it, and I'd read it three times. I never understood one thing I, I read. And then, so when Pastor Mike prayed for me, I got deliverance. Come on. Yeah. Um, I got delivered from so much, I can't even, like, tell you what it was. It was, you could write a book on what happened in one night, like, smoking. My addiction is gone. Thank you, um, forgiveness. There's been people in my life that, like, I remember I said, okay, Lord, help me forgive them. I, I forgave them, but I didn't forget. But now I did. So we changed that. Uh, my Bible. Holy catfish. The next morning... <gasps> I wake up the next morning, and I read, like, half the book of John. I'm like, yeah! And I'm telling my husband, like, wow, you got to listen to this. And I got, like, I got, like, Carrie Job and the speaker in my bedroom. My husband's, like, trying to sleep. But no, that didn't happen. I'm reading the Bible. And it's just, like, insane. It's, oh, there's so many other things that happen, but that's my week. Hey, I'm Josh. <laughs> and uh, yesterday, there was a group of us who went out soul winning at the mall yesterday, evangelizing about Jesus and stuff. And like, we partnered in twos. So I was with Ben Peters, and we went up to this group of young people, and there's about eight or ten of them. And we'll, we just started talking to them and said, Hey, how's it going? You guys know you have a father in heaven who really loves you. And they're like, just started talking to us. And then they sort of were laughing and mocking us, but Ben kept pressing in, and he got into some pretty in-depth in stuff, like about sin and lust and just all of this stuff, and they kept laughing at him and me, and a, c a couple of them walked away, but a few stayed, and then we just kept talking about Jesus and preaching the gospel, and then, like, the security guard came and said, you guys got to keep it down, like, I'm getting complaints about you guys, so, which was kind of funny, but, and then, and then a little bit more time went by. We were talking for them for, with, for them for like half an hour and then more left. And there were three or four that stayed till the end and they were just so interested about what we were doing and stuff and they actually gave their lives over to Jesus last night. So praise God. They, they're not here tonight but they're from Brazil and they actually came to do school here for six months. So, and they were just at the mall, and, like, it was a divine appointment because they're from Brazil, and they're saved now. But I just got to keep praying for them because, like, it's like you get somebody saved, and then you leave them. Like, it doesn't work like that. You can't just say a prayer and then expect to go to heaven. So, like, I got to keep praying for them and, like, keep them in my prayers. And hopefully before they go back to Brazil, they'll step in these doors and experience the one true living God, which is Jesus Christ. So, Amen. Oh, let's give a hand to Jesus for what he's doing in our lives today. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> oh, I can't stop smiling. I feel like I got a hanger in my mouth. Such beautiful, beautiful testimonies. Guys, we, we only think, listen up, we only think we live in a free country. The reason that it seems free is because we've been silent. When we begin to speak up, we're going to find there's a whole bunch of 
forces out there that are going to begin to come into play and tell us, be quiet, you can't do this, you can't do that. Paul and, uh, Paul and Silas were walking through the city. Where was it? Was it Corinth? No, it wasn't Corinth. They were walking through the city. And they were, you know, there as missionaries. And a demonized woman saw them walking through the city. And she was one who had a gift of fortune telling that was enabled within her by the demon. So she could actually see stuff in people's lives and prophesy or whatever. And the guys who were exploiting her for money, there were guys who were exploiting her for money. And she, she saw Paul and, Paul and Silas and she started following after them going, these are the sons of the Most High God. Not just once or twice. She just, wherever they went, there, she was doing it. And she was speaking the truth, but the demon in her was, there was something wrong. It's like they're saying the truth, but there's something not right there. The spirit of it, the attitude of it, the effect of it is wrong. Finally, it says, Paul, after many days being grieved, turned and commanded the spirit to come out of the woman, and immediately it left her. And when those who had charged over her, saw their prophets, their hope of profit evaporate. Then they stirred up the mob. And they accused them with false accusations, saying these men are are preaching that we shouldn't obey Caesar or whatever like that. As soon as we start going into the places of business where money is being made, and we start speaking about the Lord of glory, and that people need to worship Him and not possessions and not things and put their trust in anything other than Him, we're going we're gonna to awaken that demon. And He's going to come after us. Everybody say, right on. Because right blessed are you when men persecute you and falsely say all manner of evil things about you. For great is your reward in heaven. For in the same manner they persecuted the prophets which were before you. And Jesus said in the Beatitudes, Woe to you when all men speak well of you. How many of you here have some enemies? How many of you here have some enemies because you're a Christian, not because you're a jerk? You might have some enemies because you're a jerk, and God wants to heal you of of jerkophobia or jerk, whatever that disease is. You know, you're impatient, you're mean, you're arrogant, you're selfish, you're not faithful, you're not responsible. That's not a good reason that you should have enemies. God wants to heal you of all that. But if you've got enemies because you, are, you stand on your convictions, if you've got enemies because you go and you tell people out there, you shouldn't be looking at porn, you shouldn't be treating women like they're objects, and you shouldn't be pleasuring yourself through masturbation, because that's loving self. And in scripture it says, in the last days, men will be lovers of self. You shouldn't be doing that, and they won't like you telling them that. But Jesus told lots of people stuff they did not want to hear him tell them. And ultimately, they killed him for telling him those things. And they killed every single one of his disciples, except John. And that wasn't for lack of trying. They tried to boil him in oil. And he just sat there like he was in a sauna. And he was totally fine. And they tried that the lions wouldn't eat him. And finally, they said, this is just giving more publicity to God than we want. And so they exiled him to the Isle of Patmos, whereupon God gave him the book of Revelation. The devil can't win for losing. If you're following God, everything he does against you will only advance the kingdom of God. But persecution is our inheritance. Some of you, Kyla believes that. The rest of you are like, I don't know if I want to nod to that because then I'll be like agreeing with that. Through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said, the world will hate you because it hates me. And yet we spend all of our time trying to go around being so nice to everybody that we don't rock anybody's boat. It's time to rock the boat. When you get out of the boat, you're going to rock the boat for the people who want to stay in the boat. It's time to get out of the boat. Hallelujah. Love the testimonies. 